We now know some details about Nassim Najafi Agdam, the woman who opened fire at YouTube headquarters on Tuesday, April 3rd. You're watching What's Trending, I'm Martine Bierman. Make sure to subscribe for more social media and trending news stories daily. Three people were taken to the hospital with gunshot wounds, though thankfully no deaths were reported, except for the shooter who took her own life. As is typical with shootings in public places, there were initial reports of multiple shooters, a man wearing body armor, and dozens of victims. Thankfully, none of which turned out to be true. And how sad is it that I have to start that sentence with typically in public shootings? That is not something, those words just should not be going together in a sentence. What we do know is that Nassim Agdam was a 37-year-old woman from San Diego who was reported missing by her family the day before the shooting. She had accounts on multiple video and social media platforms including YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Daily Motion. She posted content on a variety of subjects, from veganism and animal rights, to exercise, to freedom of speech. It's clear from her website and video content that Agdam was angry at YouTube for what she perceived as slights against her channel. She posted screenshots of analytics from YouTube to her website in an attempt to show that they had recently suppressed her videos and prevented her from earning money on the platform. It even led her to suggest that speech in the US is less free than it is in the Middle East. Now, contrary to what many people might have already read floating around the internet, Agdan was not actually Muslim, and she's not new to the United States. She moved to the US from Iran with her family in 1996 when she was a teenager and was a member of the Baha'i faith, but religion wasn't actually a focus of any of her channels. Her website was much more focused on activism surrounding the treatment of animals and on the way she felt YouTube was being unfair to her channel. She even embedded this 2016 video from Casey Neistat about YouTube's choice to demonetize certain videos. If YouTube determines your video to be not advertiser friendly, it pulls all monetization so you don't make any money from that video. She also shared this video on the subject of censorship from Bite Size Vegan. I am by no means the first, nor will I be the last, activist threatened with unfair and unfounded roadblocks to speaking the truth. Outspoken individuals in every movement have always fought censorship. The issue of monetization has been a big issue for all of us who post content on YouTube. There's many different descriptions and details about how all of this algorithmic stuff works, but here's a quick primer. Some videos you'll watch on YouTube have ads before them, and the channel creator gets a small piece of that advertising revenue. And this is how many creators make a living. In 2016, YouTube changed its policy on which videos could have ads played before them, after major advertisers like Amazon, Coca-Cola, and others pulled out of the program after discovering their commercials were playing before videos that showed violence, hate speech, and other stuff they really didn't want to be associated with. In order to keep posting videos to the site, YouTube and creators all need advertisers. So YouTube updated its algorithm to automatically remove ads from videos it deemed not advertiser friendly. And the result is that some channels are absolutely affected more than others. Like channels focusing on veganism, Many of them show shocking images of animals being slaughtered. And if you think about it, an advertiser like Burger King or Tyson Chicken probably want absolutely nothing to do with that anyway. You may or may not agree, but it does make sense that YouTube made that decision. And this is what's been referred to as adpocalypse. If I was an advertiser, I certainly wouldn't want my ads running on content that was malicious or gruesome in any way, shape, or form. Because ultimately, the video becomes associated with the content that you are advertising. And if they're polar opposites, then I totally understand. But the problem then comes in where with YouTube, they have bots that are scanning different channels to see what is gruesome content and what is inappropriate content. And those bots miss a lot of stuff. There are millions and millions of people on YouTube who are posting tons and tons of content to the site daily, by the minute even. So to have humans go through all that content is an unrealistic goal. Then you have bots who go through this content, sometimes get it wrong, and then you have creators who are just super frustrated because their content that shouldn't have been flagged is flagged. Ultimately, frustration at this whole situation might have been Agdam's motive, but does it give her a right to then go and shoot up a bunch of people? Absolutely not. This is the act of somebody who is clearly mentally unstable. Agdam's father, Ismail, told police that she hated YouTube and even informed them that she was likely heading to the company's headquarters when he reported her missing on Monday. Her brother told reporters she was always complaining that YouTube ruined her life. But when police found her sleeping in her car early Tuesday morning, they told Ismail that she'd been found and that everything was under control. She had legally purchased a Smith & Wesson 9mm semi-automatic handgun the morning before the shooting from a local gun range. This may ultimately be her motive, but it's 
absolutely not a rational way for any disgruntled individual to take out frustrations, ever. Our hearts go out to those who most likely had the most frightening day on Tuesday. We hope that every single person that was injured by this makes a full recovery. And as crazy as this is to say, amid the crazy barrage of shootings that we've had in the US, glad that this wasn't worse. Let us know what you guys think and sound off in the comments below. Thanks for watching.